weapons. They shoot, reload and get the job done. But before they make it into your armory, each one goes through a long and tough journey. Today we're going to show you this journey, or to put it better, the way of the gun. The journey begins with the content producer, who crafts the overall concept for the season. This includes the main theme, standout elements, color palette and cultural references, details that shape future weapons. After all, the difference between cyberpunk and medieval themes isn't just stylistic, it affects the tiniest details. Once the concept is set, the content producer narrows down the list of potential weapons, determining the necessary categories, types and attribute combinations. This information, along with detailed reference boards featuring possible color schemes, key elements and inspiration sources, is handed off to the concept artists. The concept artist then creates several sketches for each weapon. After thorough discussions, a single concept is chosen. Let's take a closer look at the specific weapon you'll see in an upcoming update. Fortunately, this weapon had only one concept from the start, deemed the best, and was developed further. As you can see, the final version hasn't changed much. Yay! Our insect-inspired shotgun has been approved by all teams, but it's still two-dimensional. Now the magic begins. The designer translates the sketch into voxels, giving it a three-dimensional form. This process may seem mesmerizing, but it's a serious task for the designer. They must not only add volume and color, but also pedantically inspect the weapon from all angles, especially the back, since that's the view players will see most often. If everything looks good, the weapon moves to the 3D artist. Here the weapon undergoes another transformation. First, it's turned into a low-poly model with optimized details. Then a high-poly texture is applied and each element is polished. Of course, every stage is reviewed and approved. The 3D model is now complete and gleaming with bright colors, but there's still one crucial step. Just as humans need bones and joints to move, our weapon needs a rigging process to function properly. Simply put, bones are inserted into the model, allowing its parts to move. If you look closely, you'll notice that each weapon has a set of animations for different situations. The weapon moves a certain way when you're standing still, but behaves differently when walking, shooting, reloading or in the armory. Next, we add animations. In some studios, a special department handles all the animations, but in our case, this responsibility falls to the 3D artists. They consider all the demands of the concept artist and bring them to life in 3D. Our moth-like shotgun receives its animations and is closely inspected by the team to ensure they are smooth and free of glitches. Now the weapon is ready for in-game testing. The animation timings must work perfectly to provide the intended feel of the gun. Meanwhile, three different specialists work on the shotgun. The game designer sets the weapon's stats – damage, fire rate, magazine capacity and mobility. They also tweak its attributes. Simultaneously, the visual effects artist adds necessary effects gun flashes, glows, halo effects, glitter and more. Without these, the shotgun would look washy and uninspired, and our moth-like gun simply can't afford that. Even the gun flash differs between weapon types, which must be considered when creating effects. Plus, the visual effects inform players about the weapon status. For example, if the gun is empty, players can intuitively understand this without needing to look at the interface. At the same time, the sound designer works on the weapon's audio. Every weapon in Pixel Gun 3D is unique and requires specific sound effects. For example, our shotgun resembles an insect, so the sound designer chose liquid, poisonous and slimy sounds, layering them to create a complex effect.
When idle, the weapon emits a sound combined with cricket chirps, cicada buzzing and a short ambient sound sample. Naturally, each stage is reviewed multiple times to achieve the perfect sound. After all the hard work, checkups, approvals and more checkups, the weapon is ready for testing. The QA team is the first to test the weapon. They have a detailed checklist to ensure every little thing is correct. How the weapon looks in the lobby and armory, whether it's named correctly and if the description is accurate. They then test all animations, sounds, attributes and the crosshair. Every detail is carefully examined, including underwater shooting and the weapon's reaction to change in light. The testers fill out a table based on the findings and pass it to the relevant departments for adjustments. Next, the game designers test the weapon on a special map, focusing on its attributes and stats to ensure that it deals enough damage, the effects work correctly and so on. After that, the weapon is tested in an open playtest. Game designers, artists and community managers join a private match to evaluate the weapon's properties with fresh eyes. Once all adjustments are finalized, the weapon just has to wait for the update release to finally fall into the hands of the players. The shotgun you've seen is codenamed the Mothin Devastator. You'll soon be able to add it to your armory and check it out in the battle. No matter where the Moth and Devastator fits in your loadout, we wanted to show you that every weapon in Pixel Gun 3D is a labor of love and hard work from many people. Because without passion and dedication, you can't create. Whether it's drawing, meticulously crafting sound layers or perfecting gun flashes. We cherish each and every weapon we create, even if they fall from Pixel Gunner's grace. We just hope that after this journey, you'll see your armory from a new perspective. But all in all, that's the way of the gun.